this 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 will be printed and and this this will be here here it will be black so by some combination it 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 can be created and this is just a printed channel and the dimensions of this channel are written here now what is the utility of this channel that we are using that Wattman filter paper so we have given that cellulose fiber that is basically this so here we are giving the blood so this is the loading tube now after that it will be just add like a it is just chakni jo it is just like that but it will just separate the plasma from the blood cellular component will be here and that that plasma will be separated and come in this zone that is called the separation zone and again in this part you are giving some reagent where plasma will react and finally it will be that give you that color whatever is desired suppose you have a disease what what is the if you have a disease then what will be the change as a, i am not a student of the biology so it is uh, some somewhat uh, there may be some uh, technical wrong in the technical terms but uh, whatever i have understood that some antigen or some foreign thing that will come in your plasma so how to detect that disease that first you have to separate plasma from the blood then you have to give a reagent which will work or which will react with that antigen and then if the reaction occurs then you will you can say that yes that this, uh, this uh, uh, antigen is existing in the plasma so that means disease is there and if if the reaction will fail then you will tell that no there is no such disease so it is as simple as that so here but if you go to that hospital then what will what will happen then in hospital you will find there is a huge uh, crowd that yeah, there uh, and always you have to sit in a you have to stand in a long queue then your turn will come then some person who is a clinically expert he can he will take the blood from your vein and then you then they will tell that you, you may get the report in the evening suppose morning you, you will get, give the blood you will get the report in the evening so there are such a long queue and long chain will be there and cost of that is also very high it is in compared to this but here this is just nothing just a you can just a, take a printed channel if you have a very good printer and then you just put the patient blood sample then separate the plasma you put the reagent reagent here and then according to the reaction you can detect the disease so this diagnostic platform is very simple it does not require such a high supply chain that whatever we are facing in the everyday hospital so and also it does not require any skilled technician if you can take the capillary blood from by a finger if you can give that capillary blood that is fingerprint blood and you can get the result so that uh, no the skilled technician is required and also that this is very portable so you need not to report in a particular health center or hospital it is a portable device so it can be treated as a point of care point of care means at the point where you are sitting you will be able to get the care suppose now i am sitting in my chamber office chamber now if i want to get the complete blood count it is not possible i have to go to that phu health center and then i have to give the blood and in the next day or maybe in the evening i shall get the complete blood count but here nothing is there if you you have to just if you have this type of paper strip you can give the blood and you can get that result but obviously there are some limitations or shortcomings that i am coming in the subsequent slides now this is we are discussing that blood plasma separation on paper strip this is basically a mu pad micro paper analytic devices so just we are this is the whatman paper this is grade 4 paper then 
this is that we are giving the blood here and and then the blood is trying to flow here and this is there will be blood plasma separation and there will be a when that plasma will meet the reagent and there will be a formation of the color after the reaction so uh, in the last part you have to apply the chemistry and biochemistry then to get to know that what type of disease or what type of antigen is is present in the plasma so now this clinical assay we are using for detecting plasma creatinine it can be used for others also this is the finger prick blood and the collection of the blood in the edta tube we are collecting the blood in the edta tube because that it will not be coagulating otherwise it will be coagulating and then we will load the blood in this paper based microfluidic device and then there will be that plasma separation and ultimately it will come here that uh, uh, plasma will come that in the detection zone and in the detection zone it will react with the reagent and then we just take the uh, image of this uh, detection zone so we are capturing the image and this image can be captured by the smartphone only then we can make some data analysis of images they yeah, just it is as simple as rgb analysis red green blue analysis i think all of you are aware of the matlab and in matlab you know that if you just give a color then rgb analysis can be performed and from that you can predict that whatever is whatever the level of creatinine or any other plasma glucose level also can be determined now i am talk, coming to the second platform this is the rotating compact lens so here that, that Sir, is the part body yes. twin that i mean plasma separation is uh, done on the basis of centrifugal action and this is till this there is no centrifugation but from this point it is centrifugation and that i am explaining that how the plasma is separated in this platform there are two platforms one platform is the paper based in the paper based it is just like a chakni it is just uh, you, you can consider like this that there are some mud uh, particle and mud and water and then you just put this mud water in that uh, in that uh, chakni then automatically you will find that in the uh, water will just pass through that so it is just like in that way in that principle plasma is separated छाकनी that plasma is coming in this region is it clear now mm -hmm. yes now that uh, we are coming to the second platform that is the rotating compact lens so this is basically a polymethyl methyl acrylate sheet i think that uh, now where the students are aware of that pen drive but before that the this type of compact disc were there especially in our time i think that uh, professor chatterjee also can remember that uh, this uh, uh, in our time that this type of compact disc we are frequently using now the students are using that simply pen drive so it is a um, compact disc made up of that polymethyl methyl acrylate and uh, there are three layers that fabrication of the disc i am coming later on so to understand this the, uh, we are putting some blood drop here and what are the we are the blood drop in the rotating compact disc now we are analyzing the forces what are the forces which are acting so there since it is the question of the rotation there may be clockwise rotation or counter clockwise rotation now if we put the blood then that there are three types of forces 
which are acting on the blood. That is, one is the Euler force, Coriolis force, and centrifugal force. All these forces are the body forces. That means, if I consider the blood as the free body of the free body diagram of the blood, so complete blood volume, these three forces are acting on a rotating reference frame. So the Euler force, this is the expression for the Euler force. This is m d omega dt into r. And Coriolis force, this is 2m, then omega cross v. Then centrifugal force, this is m omega cross omega cross r. It, this is basically, as you know, m omega square r. I, I am just writing this in the vectorial form. So you are seeing that there are four channels are there. So in these four channels, we are loading the blood. And it is showing by this red diagram. And then these are the free body diagram of that on the blood. Uh, we are seeing that three types of forces are acting. Now that what is Coriolis effect? So these now these channels may be that centrifugally dominant. Now you know that if it is centrifugally dominant, suppose at a point you put that even in a simple disk. Then at a point, you mark and put the blood drop. If it is centrifugally dominant, you just um, take a line which is joining the center and that point, And you draw the radius. So it will be just uh, go in the radial direction after centrifugation. Now, if, if there is some Coriolis effect, then if it is counterclockwise rotation, it is just will turn in the right side. And if it is clockwise rotation, it will turn in the left side. Now, this Coriolis effect ha has a high uh, application in healthcare industry. Why? That uh, this is simple because that Coriolis force. If you see that, this is omega cross v. Now, there are two things. One is that if the omega is very high, then or then you will get a higher amount of Coriolis effect, or this V will be high. Now, what is this V? V is the velocity of the blood flow, but it is relative velocity. That means that if the more cellular component or, uh, will be present in the blood due to the viscous action, its velocity will be reduced. But if, if, if any at low RPM, suppose, that if cellular component is low, then this velocity will be very high. So then you will get a significant Coriolis force. And this is not, uh, and this is somehow, it, is, it was not uh, not taken into consideration in uh, the cross centrifuge, whatever it used in hospital. They are mainly th thinking that the Coriolis effect will be dominating only in case of that high RPM. But if, it, if the RPM is uh, low, even in low RPM, if the hematocrit level is very low, then we will get a significant Coriolis effect. So that can be, that principle can be used to detect low level of hematocrit, even to detect low level of anything. So this is the application of the Coriolis effect in healthcare. That is uh, flow control in biomimic mi microchannel and targeted drug delivery because that uh, you know, because of this property that Coriolis effect that also uh, that also facilitate mixing. So due to that targeted drug delivery that is exploiting the density difference uh, that is possible. Why we are talking here the density difference because that centrifugal force it is, you see that it is simply that your m omega square r. So M, it is, if you consider in unit volume, then M will be that your rho. Rho is the density. So if the density will be more, then this centrifugal force will be more. Now, if, if we think about the blood, in blood, that liquid component is, is plasma. And then the cellular component has RBC, WBC, and platelet. Now, all four, uh, these four have different densities. So if you centrifuge the blood, then they will be accumulated in different positions. So that we can uh, utilize here. So that is 
that is the mainly exploiting density difference and also it can be used for the hematocrit determination and separation of blood components as i have explained and separation of the viable and non viable cell and then separation of the different biofluids as well as flow switching all the applications are not we will not discuss in this uh, presentation we will mainly focus how to determine the hematocrit and how to separate that various cellular components from blood and later on i will also i have some slides regarding that determination of the hemoglobin so now i am coming to that this is just the third year fluid mechanics a uh, second year i think that it is in your uh, is taught in second year in uh, fluid mechanics that uh, that there is a very popular equation that is momentum conservation equation that is called the navier stokes equation in the navier stokes equation in the left hand side you will find that inertia term and in the right hand side that is you will find first hydrostatic pressure term which is basically pressure force then you will find that the term related to the shear stress that is uh, basically that surface force and if you take the derivative of the shear stress then you will find that uh, the uh, the force in unit volume and then the right hand and then again that uh, that body force term body force uh, that is the mainly here the three types of body force are there that i have discussed that uh, euler force coriolis and centrifugal force now that how to determine this part that is the uh, shear stress uh, tensor then we have to consider that non newtonian fluid or newtonian fluid for the newtonian fluid that we all know that it is uh, that uh, uh, rho uh, Uh, it is uh, just uh, your, your rho mu by it, if it is rho is taken here so uh, that we, uh, then we, it, it is coming that mu then bracket square u uh, so it will be simply that mu in bracket del square u del x square plus del square u del y square in two dimensional case and uh, if you divide by rho then it is it is coming that mu by rho that is new into red square u or new into del square u del x square plus del square u del y square new is known as the momentum diffusivity now that is for newtonian for for the non newtonian then we have to uh, separately consider this terminology because this is power law so non newtonian if it is blood then we can consider the power law model and power law model the parameters of the power law that is k and n that, that two parameters consistency coefficient and four behavior index that strongly depend on the hematocrit and body force term in this rotating reference frame i have already discussed now that why we are doing this why we are using the blood or the cd then a cd platform offers unique set of advantages first one is the compactness it is very compact and it can be easily operated it is biodegradable dix and we can get the rapid result at low cost and multiplexing means that we can process different samples simultaneously because there are different channels for multiplexing so that is that is why this advantage is make it an attractive option for point of care diagnostics point of care diagnostics i have just now explained that it is at at the point in which we are uh, we are we will get the diagnostics results so that is why it is called the point of care diagnostics so it can easily be deployed among the underserved population in resource constant settings where healthcare facilities are really scarce then a majority of the diseases that are diagnosed by blood biopsy and that can be easily done in this low cost portable microfluidic platform and also that blood hydrodynamics on a cd have great potential as an alternative means of diagnosis because that in clinical assay in hospital that diagnosis is mainly done mainly carried out by the principal of the biochemistry they are purchasing some very costly reagent and then they are making that blood plasma separation and then putting that reagent and 
making the reaction. So once you are buying that costly reagent, there are some problems. First one is that that it is associated. The your treatment will become diagnosis will become costly. So you have to pay more. That is the first problem. And the second problem is that storage and stability of the reagent. Suppose I want to make I want to make the diagnosis of many patients uh, that whether they have COVID or not in some rural regions. Then what shall I do? I cannot bring that hospital into that rural region. Uh, that I do not have the Aladdin's magic lamp to bring that uh, hospital building to that rural region. Alternatively, I can bring such a uh, such a compact uh, portable CD in that rural region, and just um, by doing this principle, we can we, we, we can achieve the target. And uh, uh, so here, that it is totally based on that biomechanics here. That uh, um, this uh, type of reagent storage and stability that will not come into the picture, and also the supply chain management of the reagent that will also not come into the picture. So that is also one important thing. That is why the diagnostics are become nowadays very costly, but actually it should not be there. So if we just exploit this blood hydrodynamics on the CD, then by the principle of the physics we can make the diagnostics. Then this is the design layout. We can consider the angular variation also and radial variation also. So now that we are just plotting this, this is that plot of F Coriolis by F centrifugal versus one by Stauhal number. I think that you know about the Stauhal number. It is that N D by V. N is the frequency of that uh, vortex and D is the diameter, V is the velocity. Now, that it is totally, it is uh, scale. So, if you make the scale analysis that your 1 by Stauhal number, it is coming, it is Stauhal number is N D by V. Now, 1 by Stauhal number, it will come that V by N D. So, or V by A, sometimes it is A is also written as F, so V by F. So, V will be, it is scaled omega square, right? and that F will be scaled as omega. So, it will be just proportional to the omega. Omega is the RPM in which you are rotating the city. So, as RPM increases, you will find that that Coriolis force will go on increases in comparison with the centrifugal force. So F Coriolis by F centrifugal, it is increases with 1 by Stauhal number. And you will, I have shown here that region A and region B, that for the region A, you are seeing that it is value is lying from 0 to point, or it is negligible. Values 0.5, and once it is almost in the region B, it is coming that Coriolis force is also of the order of magnitude of the centrifugal force, it causes the unit. Now that we are plotting that normalized velocity profile versus normalized position. So by the term normalized, we should not be confused. It is simply that we have some values of the velocity. We just put them in 0 to 1. So if you have some numerical values and if you want to scale it between 0 to 1, then simply from each value, you deduct the minimum and divide it by the minimum minus maximum. So there, it is simple formula is that suppose if you have x1, x2, x10 values. So in the x1, to extend, you find which value is the minimum. So you just subtract that minimum from each x. So numerator will be that your xi, where i varies from 1 to n, minus that x minimum. And denominator will be x maximum minus x minimum. So if you do it, you will find that all the numerical values will be transformed from 0 to 1. 
and here also in the position also we are doing the same thing in the position since it is a channel we are taking the central line and the middle position that is basically zero if it is below the middle position it is negative above it is positive now accordingly we have made it so it is ultimately coming that 0.5 is the middle position it is also transformed to 0 to 1 now we are taking a particular value of hematocrit this hematocrit is for a healthy patient it is 43.5% and for this hematocrit we are seeing that how it is varying with in three rpm in two rpm that is 600 rpm and 3000 rpm and we are seeing that this is the reference in the reference it is centrifugal where the coriolis effect is not there this is the reference and and we are considering that there are three are two rpm so we are considering the coriolis effect. so it is quite natural that for a when the hematocrit is very high 43.5% that is that means that it is a good amount of hematocrit here the viscous effect will be predominant due to predominancy of the viscous effect that v will not be that much higher so equation is m omega cross v so if the v is not higher only in case of high omega we will get that high coriolis force so here in case of 3000 rpm we are getting that high coriolis force and what it it is rendered what does this coriolis force render it renders just shift of this velocity profile if you consider suppose this is a if you i think that you are you are conversant with the flow between two parallel plates in the flow between two parallel plates in the fully developed region you are getting a parabolic profile so that is for the water now instead of water if you give the blood then you will get you will not get the parabolic profile but it is something it is looking similar to the parabolic it may not be y equal to some constant in x square but it may not it be maybe that y equal to some constant x to the power 1.98 so and in both the cases it, it for water you already studied in your fluid mechanics book and in case of that uh, um, blood also that uh, maximum velocity that will be in the center line that is without the without considering the effect of the coriolis force we are considering the effect of the only centrifugal force but once coriolis force effect is considered then there is a shift from of the maximum velocity from the center so based on that we have defined the coriolis effect which is the ratio of this shift divided by half of the channel width or radius of the channel because that maximum shift is possible till the wall wall is the half of the channel width so accordingly we have considered a non dimensionalized parameter which is coriolis effect now we are seeing here that effect of hematocrit we are plotting the velocity profile for different hematocrit value but we have fixed the rpm so once we have fixed the rpm and it is not that much high rpm it is just 1000 rpm so if the hematocrit is high suppose hematocrit is 50% or 43.5% then we will get a very minimal coriolis effect but that effect is being enhanced if the hematocrit becomes low you see that in the this green line that coriolis effect is minimum how to understand this effect because that that maximum velocity that is shifted how maximum velocity of is shifted from the zero position zero position means center line so how the maximum velocity point is shifted from the center line that is the benchmark to identify that coriolis effect so based on that parameter we are identifying the coriolis effect 
So here in, you are seeing that at zero to fifty equal to fifty percent, it is very less, and as zero to fifty is forty three point five percent, it is very slightly more. As it is thirty percent, it is more, and if it is zero percent, that means almost it is very highly anemic patient. Then you are finding that it is shifting to the towards the max. It is uh, right toward, and that means there is a significant shift of the maximum velocity. Now that we are also plotting that the Reynolds number versus hematocrit, and we are seeing that Reynolds number variation of the hematocrit, if the hematocrit is going to be increased, that Reynolds number is going to be decreased. That is quite natural because that hematocrit is going to be increased. That means velocity is going to be decreased. That is why Reynolds number is going to be decreased. So that means we are finding a very important conclusion that even at Lower hematocrit, that we can get uh, um, significant Coriolis effect even at lower R. At lower hematocrit level, we can get significant Coriolis effect even at very low R. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, is it uh, is it yes. fine? Yes, you are audible. It, 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 it okay. is visible. Yes, yes. Now that uh, Coriolis effect and the hematocrit in this way, you can correlate. That we have just plotted this normalized velocity versus uh, position, and we are seeing that that hematocrit at zero percent. This is that red line. You are finding that significant shift of the maximum velocity, and also there is a shift of the velocity. In, in at hematocrit equal to thirty percent. Then now I am coming to the fabrication part of this this type of uh, digs. For this fabrication, it is uh, not that much. It is simple, but it is not that much simple as paper based microfluidics. In paper based, you need a printer, only, and in your lab also you can do that. But for this fabrication, you need some uh, table of CNC machine. It is. Uh, I have made this application in a funded project that is uh, by Stars Imagery, and, um, and they. I have purchased one tabletop engraver. Uh, that is uh, that is basically a tabletop CNC milling machine, and it, it cost around four point five lakhs. And then I have taken that polymethyl methyl acrylate sheet. That is very low cost. Even by spending five hundred rupees, you can get a large roll of sheet. Then you have to just machining the sheet. That you are seeing that it is basically micro machining. So this this the middle layer that has that that has only the twenty micron thickness. You are seeing that this is the top layer. You are, you are just seeing some holes are there. So these holes are for loading the blood. Then after that, that blood will come in that uh, in this middle layer where the channel design will be there, and the bottom layer is just for the support. So the, and after making these three layers uh, separately, you you have to use a laminator to make this uh, tight fitting, and to, so that there will not be any leakage. And just join these uh, uh, three layers in a simple, in a, in a single dig. So this is a three-layer CD, and it is designed with multiplexing. Multiplexing means that they, uh, here they, you are seeing that there are five channels, and so the five blood samples can be processed processed simultaneously. So you can load. Five, five um, blood samples of five patients simultaneously, and you can get the results also simultaneously. So that uh, it is, and also as you have, you might have understood by this time that RBC and WBC they have density difference. So if by exploiting that density difference, RBC can be separated from the WBC or vice versa. And there is a in the literature in the one density medium has been reported that is fecal. So we have to put the fecal and then we have to just centrifuge it and then we we slightly centrifuge it and then we put the blood sample in these loading holes and it will facilitate the, the separation. Without fecal also there will be separation, but fecal will facilitate. 
Now that is blood and fecal on CD. That this is the before centrifugation. It is a channel number five. Before centrifugation, we are putting this blood sample. Hello. And this is hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, I mean, in your previous slide, I mean there is a circular region, right? So uh, yes, the composition of blood. Yes, yes. The composition of blood will be layer by layer agglomerated in, around this uh, circular periphery. I mean, based on their density difference. It is uh, whatever you have told that it is partially correct. Actually, that uh, blood is loaded in this uh, zone, in this region. And then when you are centrifuging it, that centrifugal force, that is rho omega square r, that is acted on the four components. The liquid component is plasma and then RBC, WBC and your uh, platelet. Because of that, RBC has higher density, then RBC is coming to the periphery. That is showing here. Other components that will be just plasma will be there. In the, you will seeing that yellow something yearly share, and also that WBC that will not move because that WBC has some nucleus and it is uh, something bigger volume and lesser density, and its rigidity is also high. That is why it will be accumulated in the center only. So there will be different region of interest for each cellular component. Is it clear now? Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? I, I, I got this point. Yes, yes. Okay. So, this is that before centrifugation, you just load the blood. But centrifugation, rotation of the CD is not started. And this is the during centrifugation. And this is centrifugation is complete. Here, then other cellular components are also there. But you are seeing that red uh, the color that is coming in the periphery because of the RBC. RBC has the red color. And uh, RBC has the highest density. So that is why after the centrifugation, that RBC comes to the periphery. And then this is, we are seeing using the microscope that uh, we are seeing that concentrated RBC at the periphery by the microscopic view. Then we are seeing that scattered WBC in the CD center. Center of the compact disc, we are seeing that WBC. This is identified by the morphology. And for the confirmation, because this microscope can also be integrated in, in smartphone. That uh, there is a, it is just like a school level microscope. It is not uh, such sophisticated microscope because it will be used in point of care setting in rural regions. So, but for the confirmation of the WBC, whether they are really on the city center or not, that we have taken, we have made that fluorescent tag WBC. That means we are using anti CD45, that is a biomarker. And in that anti CD45, we tag the fluorescent. Fluorescent is the color which will just emit the, uh, emit the color in the microscope, emit the light in the microscope. So if you just Tag the fluor give the antibody. Antibody will just bind with that WBC. And if it is if it is fluorescent tagged antibody or fluorescent tagged biomarker, then if if we put this under fluorescent microscope, then we will be able to see some dots here. Here it is actually black and white printout. That is why it is not uh, clear. But uh, there are if you uh, observe it very minutely, you will find that very white. Uh, there are some uh, white drops uh, um, are there. And in the microscope, it is clearly fluorescent tag. Uh, my microscope, it is uh, clearly visible, and it is uh, just coming that uh, some green regions. It is totally green, and uh, that is why uh, it, uh, it can be confirmed that that WBCs they are scattering near the city center. So that means we are able to separate that RBC and WBC. Now that we are the based on the separation time. We are predicting the count of the RBC WBC. We are just doing some statistical analysis. We are giving the mean and the error bar. We are showing mean and standard deviation. And we are taking the time for separation. And that we utilize the time for separation. That is for the uh, to find the count of the different components. Then 
this is uh, there are possible cues in disease detection based on this and uh, the, 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 there is uh, that i have noted here that for a highly anemic patient the Coriolis effect is predominantly observed. Hence, this principle can be used uh, for anemia detection. Then the second point is the evaluation of the Coriolis effect on a blood sample would be directly linked to the determination of hematocrit. Then the third point is the nature of velocity profile would be linked with the viability of the cell. The fourth point is the, the extent of the Coriolis effect may be related to the RBC aggregation level. In RBC, there is a just uh, uh, the, uh, you have mentioned that the aggregation of the RBC. So that level, uh, okay, then that that is related to the extent of the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect on the blood sample could be indicative of proportions of different cellular components that I have just discussed. Then also that we can um, determine the hemoglobin also in this platform. That is, first we have to, hemoglobin is also very important for anemia detection. That hemo, first we have to understand that hemoglobin that is inside the RBC cell. So we have to make the lysis of the RBC. That if you lysis means just in a bucket of water, you put some kishmish. That I'm just, uh, I think that you would understand Bengali that Kishmish, you the Jolly Mudraka, the Joltaki, you put a Kishmish and Mother Education, and Kishmish take a fatan. Fatan on Taki, it can lysis Bolarchi. So the lysis, that is basically that we have to make the lysis of the RBC, then hemoglobin will come. And once hemoglobin will come, you can just simply make the color of it because that it has the red color. If it is more hemoglobin, then color would be red color will be more. If it is less in hemoglobin, red color will be less. So hemoglobin is an essential biomarker for several physiological disorders, especially untreated animal. Now the normal range of the concentration of hemoglobin, that is within 13.5 to 17.5 gram per deciliter for males and 12.5 to 15.5 gram per deciliter for females and in adults. In anemic patients, blood hemoglobin concentration becomes less than 12 gram per dl, whereas severe anemia, for severe anemia, it becomes less than the 7 gram per dl. Therefore, accurate quantification of hemoglobin concentration is very important for routine blood pathology examination. Now, that established methods that is used in that your hospitals that is automated hematology analyze, analyzer that is gold standard and also apart from that, that there is also some other method like that kyanomethemoglobin uh, uh, method and spectrometric method and then gravity metric copper sulfate method now that what are, the, what are the shortcomings of these different established gold standard methods for hemoglobin estimation? That automated hematology analysis is very expensive. And that is cyanomethanoglobin and spectrometric methods are cheaper. But that involves a laborious as well as time-consuming approach. And then accuracy of the gravimetric copper sulfate method, that is, is still less. Therefore, this method cannot be impl implemented as extreme point of care setting for the underserved population. As we have understood that in India, there are many village regions and they are not getting that routine checkup. Suppose if you can consider that I have made uh, this type of survey that uh, many tribal regions that uh, in, during the pregnancy, there are some routine checkup is required. Routine checkup of the hemoglobin and other vitamins also. But that checkup is so costly, most of the tribal women, they are not able to afford that. And uh, that is so, if with the help of the ASHA workers, if you can make that this point of care device available to them, then a routine checkup is possible. So, that is why it is extreme point of care in these gold standard methods cannot be implemented for underserved population. Then advantages of the estimation of hemoglobin on a portable rotating device. 
This is simple channel design, then multiplexing, then uh, reagent free hemoglobin estimation. Now I am uh, coming how the uh, uh, estimation of the hemoglobin would be reagent free, then highly sensitive and specific. So this is a sensitivity and specificity. This is a, some terminology that we have to understand. Sensitivity means suppose that nowadays we are all doing that COVID checkup. Suppose you are making a device, maybe that is uh, microfluid is best point of care device for detecting COVID. Then what is the sensitivity of the device? So you are making some checking and you some for some patients you are getting positive and for some patients you are getting negative. So now if I do the checking in a gold standard device, that in the gold standard device that will that will give some positive and negative. And your device will also have some positive and negative results. You can, based on that, you can tell that this patient is COVID positive or COVID negative. Now, that you are considering that both standard results are absolutely fine and your results you are just checking that whether they are fine or not. Sensitivity means number of two positive in the human, it is, both are ratio. Sensitivity and specificity. Now, sensitivity means that in the numerator it will be number of two positive, in the denominator it will be number of two positive plus number of false negative. That is sensitivity. And if you consider the specificity, that is in the numerator it will be number of two negative divided by number of two negative plus number of false positive. In a simple word, you can tell that sensitivity that is mainly related with the two positive. Your device, you are telling he has positive, he is COVID positive. And actually it is also that. If that, is, that will be consistent, then your device will be high sensitivity. And specificity, it, is, it depends on that your negative, two negative. Suppose you are telling that the patient is negative, uh, COVID negative. And actually it is also true. He is COVID negative. That means your device is high specific. It, is, it has high specificity. But you are telling that it is uh, the, uh, the patient is COVID negative, but in actual case he is positive. So you are basically that it is uh, your specificity will be will go down. So it is just a mathematics of the sensitivity and specificity. Then, a, oh, then the, that fifth point is experiment is done at uncontrolled environment with the help of unskilled technicians. So this, because that we are taking the capillary blood by finger print. So skilled technicians are not required and uncontrolled controlled environment means outside the laboratory environment. Once you are not using reagent, in the hemoglobin, generally that for the RBC lysis, toluene and some mixture are used. So for that um, preserving of that reagent, refrigerated phase, etc. will be required. So that is why laboratory environment, that is controlled environment is required. But if it is reagent free, then you can use the uncontrolled environment. Therefore, this process is used as a point of care device at resource limited setting for underserved population. Now we are coming to the fabrication of this device. This I have already explained. Uh, just uh, you can see that uh, how, how to see the different layers. This is the top layer, middle layer and bottom layer. And this is the front view of the all layers. And this is the three layers where it, is, it, it has been shown separately. Then what are the stepwise process? So first, we are using that just like I am giving that example of the Kishmish and water. We are same same thing we are using here that RBC and water. So we are loading here that water and then rotating the disc for transporting the water to the outer periphery of the channel. So if water has it has very high density. As you know, it is thousand kg per meter. So if you just rotate, then water will immediately go to the periphery. Then what will you do? You will do the, you will load the blood in the same channel and then blood, blood will be rotated. And after rotation, you will find that 
is RBC, WBC platelet you will, you will not able to see by bare eye, uh, by microscope you can see, but in the bare eye, naked eye, that you will see that it is, that it, this RBC will go to the periphery and after the, uh, just uh, before RBC, when it towards the center, uh, that there is a yellowish uh, type of, uh, yellowish type of color you will see, that is plasma. And once RBC will go to the periphery, in the periphery already there is existence of water. So RBC will be uh, it, it will be in the water. Now we are giving the water in such a way. Now what what will be the amount of the water that you are tasting? How much microliter of the blood and how much microliter of the water you will keep? We will keep in such a way so that it will be that hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solution means that in water that will move into the RBC and make the lysis of the RBC. And once lysis of the RBC will complete, then you will find this type of reddish color and then you just uh, take that photo, uh, photo in the mobile and then you can make that RGB analysis in the gray scale. And this is, we are fitting it measured versus actual and we are finding that it is a very high uh, coefficient of determination. It is showing that 0.985 coefficient of determination. So goodness of fit is very high, measured versus actual. So then we can, by that, uh, uh, that means that whatever the value we are getting the grayscale, we will just put an equation of that with the measured hemoglobin in the gold standard degree. So then we will find a correlation and that correlation we will use to, uh, to find the hemoglobin that uh, for an unknown patient. And the coefficient we have uh, tested for many patients, the coefficient of variation it is simply that your um, that uh, standard deviation by the mean. So for the each blood sample, we are just like it is uh, doing the experiment in your laboratory, we make it three times measurement and in the three times measurement we are taking the mean and standard deviation then standard deviation by mean then for this all the blood samples we just find the coefficient of variation and we have seen that it is below the seven percent so that is uh, there is good precision in the measurement now we have uh, find the equation of the how to detect the anemia that is measured versus actual, we will make the fitted line by the least square method. I think that in the numerical analysis, you have learned how to fit this uh, different points. So there is correlation between that hemoglobin concentration measurement results of 15 blood samples in the portable platform, that is present measurement and automated hematology analysis, that is gold standard measurement, where hemoglobin concentrations ranging from five gram per deciliter 11.5 gram per deciliter. In the anemic range also we have covered with a good correlation coefficient of 0.98. So this is the anemic range and also that we have plotted that we have seen that what is the coefficient of variation for different blood samples for the anemic range. So we here also we have found that it is further less. It is less than 4%. That means it indicates very good precision among the measurements. Now the overall process of the HB estimation, hemoglobin estimation in the present point of care device that I have uh, represented by, by this, I am representing by this schematic diagram. This is the your finger and by picking the finger, we are collecting the blood in irritating. Then we are loading the blood in this type of platform. So this is the rotational drive. We just have to supply the power here and then we will rotate it. And then there will be blood plasma separation and basically it is RBC is separated and it is going to the periphery. Then we are just capturing the image by the smartphone and then we are doing the image analysis. We are finding the average intensity and through the correlation, we will find the amount of hemoglobin, concentration of hemoglobin. So now the major conclusions of the present work that though I have already reported it, I already told this conclusion that it is uh, that uh, it, is, it is showing significant improvements or drastic improvements over the reported methods in different accounts such as infrastructure setting. It does not require any sophisticated infrastructure. 
and detection range of hemoglobin concentration because that we are able to detect the anemic range also and accuracy of the detection technique also it is uh, appreciable because that we have very high uh, we got a very high correlation and then it is it does not require any reagent so the cost of the reagent stability and storage of the reagent supply chain management of the reagent it will not be there and sufficiently it is low cost so thank you so much for your listening is there any further question then i'll be happy to answer all those questions anyone wish to ask any question we are extremely thankful to uh, dr uh, shortkar sir for your extre extremely valuable presentation and uh, deliberation of this lecture is through your illuminating lecture you have really stimulated our young students to motivate uh, uh, do some research on this microfluidics also this uh, because this through this platform you can detect so many things concentration uh, of hemoglobin level to uh, detect anemic patient and also it may save lot of infrastructural uh, expenditure also some reagent ex expenditure from reagent and other things we can also sometimes in this post covid situation suppose we are not getting that vaccine like this or we are getting vaccine like this so sometimes how much in our blood cell how much uh, antibody it has been formed we can use your techniques sir i think huh? how much concentration yes. of antibody has been formed inside the uh, plasma so we can detect also concentration because if we separate those uh, you have uh, already uh, shown how to uh, separate those uh, separate those different uh, blood cor cor corpuscles at different levels so definitely they are having somewhat density difference those corpuscles and those antibodies so we can detect also this way now that right yes yes and definitely so, this can be exploited this principle level of antibody so one yes. of uh, our students told that uh, okay whether that uh, apart from our uh, engineering teams uh, medical students also should learn this type of things but uh, obviously when they they will uh, tackle those type of devices so basic principle of operation they should know but uh, uh, that medical technologist or those laboratory technicians they should be conversant but technical uh, manufacturing and those analysis aspect obviously engineers should do what i believe sir is it correct sir yes yes it is very much correct that it is basically that a combination of the medical and engineering students Uh, if that technique, whatever is used, it is obviously engineering techniques. But application domain is medical domain. So why the application? No applications of biochemistry and those things because sometimes that yes. coagulation level and those things, blood. Some sometimes we are using some anti-coagulating agents like sodium citrate, or you are using that uh, uh, dimethyl. Uh, sorry, you are you are using some. uh ketonex or something some uh, yes some yes surface uh, surface uh, tension reducing agent or something hey yes yes used. that ficol ficol edta 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 so these are surface tension reducer definitely obviously yes yes so that will uh, so this type of rheology so what we are studying in fundamental fluid mechanics or even advanced fluid mechanics so these are applications of fluid mechanics engineering mechanics also the centrifugal components coriolis component that body force viscous force pressure force so all things what we are studying so obviously it has the application students you will do some project in yes yes 
detail or in your research level future in future also some of you will do some research some of you may also go to this medical technology uh, industries also so there are wide enormous applications of what you have studied in your engineering subjects basic fundamentals of fluid mechanics heat transfer or uh, engineering mechanics these are indispensable from your uh, to your future studies so this yes, is yes. so thank you sir for your extremely <laughs> illuminating lecture which has got uh, which uh, our students got immensely benefited and they have in, uh, uh, they have enlightened their knowledge thoughts and ideas in this field so obviously so many uh, fields of engineering discipline uh, where research possible research areas it is exposed to our students so this is obviously vital for our uh, upcoming uh, young engineers in our future days not only uh, to uh, to get rid of these challenges in this uh, pandemic situations so we are we are confined at our home we are not going to our colleges but through this internet we are getting uh, uh, getting uh, knowledges thoughts and ideas from the eminent researchers this is the beauty of this type of this type of webinar so we are not full what you are telling so we are really we are enriching our knowledges so what are we are mm-hmm. thinking so akash what you are telling so uh, now so it is uh, good so before conclusion of this session i would like to hand over this microphone to uh, shuttam mishra to deliver vote of thanks to professor dr uh, arnav sarkar sir really our organizer is very much thankful for your kind support we are re- really we are uh, sincerely uh, we are since we we are sincerely saying that we are very much fortunate to have you in this webinar thank you sir shottam please thank you so much for your nice words uh, am i audible yes yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you sir we are extremely honored to have you with us we are too fortunate to share a special moment with you we were extremely deplored before the meet but we are feeling panglossian now we are highly enlightened by your elitism on behalf of the institute and the organizing committee i would like to thank you again for giving us the important treasures of your life that's your time and your valuable knowledge on we are highly enlightened by your valuable lecture being not a sesuk pedalian i would like to conclude the session and would like you to thank you on behalf of my of my institute which is a land of excellence flowing upon the seas of mediocrity thank you sir for your valuable lecture thank you sir thank you so much ele kono shomoy asben kuch bhi re ele amader college theke jabe na ha na ei rokom research je to kuch bhi re ekhon medical college o hoyeche tai amar mona ei rokom research apnara easily korte parben mane bishesh kore paper based part ta cd ta ekta pore jabe cnc e somosto dorkar paper based ta apnara easily korte parben जस्टेड दिस सेशन so whatever you are asking dipankar really this is also useful for medical students and akash we are not fool we are trying to develop our knowledge thoughts and ideas we are trying our best to give utmost whatever students can learn whatever their future prospects are there we are, we are trying to give you best best of that thoughts and ideas because we if we share our knowledge because we are we can learn from you also because akash can deliver also what project you have done in your btech because at 5 pm we have the scope akash you can also present we can learn also we are learning from different places actually in your our bengali literature uh, actually one poet actually sunirmal bosu he has told bishwajora patshala mo shobar ami chhatro 
নানান ভাবে নতুন কথা শিক্ষি দিবার আত্র এই পৃথিবীর বিরাট খাতায় পাঠ্য যে সব পাতায় পাতায় শিক্ষি সেসব কৌতূহলে সন্দেহ নাই মাত্র সো উই ক্যান লার্ন ফ্রম এভরি ওয়ার বিকজ দিস এডুকেশন ইজ এমপাওয়ারমেন্ট এডুকেশন ইজ এনরিচমেন্ট সো উই ক্যান উই ক্যান গো আউট নলেজ থটস অ্যান্ড আইডিয়াস ফ্রম ভেরিয়াস রিসার্চার্স ভেরিয়াস এক্সপার্টস ইন ডিফারেন্ট ডিসিপ্লিনস স্টুডেন্টস আর গেটিং এক্সপোজ টু দিস সো দিস ইজ অবভিয়াসলি দিস ইজ ওয়াইজ থিঙ্কিং দিস ইজ নট ফুলিস থিঙ্কিং অ্যাট অল what you believe what is the opinion akash please come out and let me know how in which angle you are telling that we are arranging this type of webinars and we are full also please suggest akash hello sir here sir, left hand me why you are daring to do so you come up huh? okay akash okay. banerji are you here akash banerji who is akash banerji मी Yes sir yes sir now i can hear you okay who is akash banerji can you know that electrical uh, third year roshi dev akash banerji is there what i recall uh, what i can recall because i am taking their power plant engineering subject one student name akash banerji is there he uh, organizer in a registered participant any name is there 